Hi everyone, welcome to GT Coding. In this video, I'll show you how to design this cookie consent banner over here. Let me show you how this works. So let's reload this page. We can see after two seconds, we get this cookie consent banner and it sticks to the bottom of the page. And whenever we refresh our page, we can see that our cookie consent banner appears after two seconds. Now, if we click on OK, and now if we refresh our page, we can see that no banner is displayed anymore. So this is what we're going to design in this video. Let's get started. I have opened up a project called cookie in VS Code over here. Let's go ahead and create the necessary files. So first we want a file called index.html. Then we want a style.css file and then we also need a javascript file. We'll call it main.js. Right, so let's start with the index.html file. We'll just type exclamation and press tab for this HTML5 boilerplate. And then we'll also link our style.css file. And in the body, we will link our script file. Now let's start writing our markup. So first of all, we will have a division called wrapper. And in that we will have an h1. And here we will type gt coding learn to code. And let's open this with live server. I have this extension installed called live server. So if you have installed this extension, then you can see this option of live server. Alright, so let's go ahead and add some paragraphs. Let's just copy this and paste it one more time. So we have our paragraphs ready. Now let's go ahead and create the cookie consent banner. So for that, we will have a division called cookie container. And in that we will have a paragraph and uh, here we will just add some text for our cookie consent message. So we have our message over here. Now let's add an anchor tag to cookie policy and privacy policy because they are actually links. So let's type A and for the href we will just type hash but uh, you have to type in the page of your cookie policy over here and I'll just cut this ending tag from here and uh, paste it over here and we'll do the same for the privacy policy alright so now we need to have a button so we'll just type button and we'll also give it a class of cookie button and uh, in here we will type OK. Alright, so that's it with our HTML. Now let's go to our style.css and uh, style this page. The first thing we'll do is we will add a universal selector and uh, remove all the margins. And then we will add a font family to our page. So we'll type font family roboto now we'll style the paragraph so for the paragraph we will have a margin of 24 pixels top and bottom and 0 for left and right and we'll also give it a line height of 2 all right so now we will style the wrapper and for the wrapper we will have a padding of 32 pixels now let's style the cookie container for the cookie container, we will set the position to fixed and bottom to zero and left zero and right zero. Now let's add a background. So for the background, we will set it to 2F3640. And for the color of the text, we will set it to F5, F6, FA. We'll also give it a padding of zero top and bottom and 32 pixels left and right. 
and we'll also give it a transition. This is for the smooth animation that we want. Now let's set the same text color for our link as well. So we'll just copy this line of code from here and we'll type cookie container A and we'll paste this code over here. And lastly, we will style the cookie button. And for the button, we will have a background color of E84118 and we'll set the border to zero and the color of the text to the same that we had for the text and then we'll give it a padding of 12 pixels and 48 pixels then we'll set the font size to 18 pixels and set the margin bottom to 8 pixels and we'll also give it a border radius of 8 pixels we'll actually set the margin bottom to 16 pixels now we'll also set the cursor to pointer so that when we hover over this we have this pointer icon now we will also add a box shadow to our cookie container so let's type box shadow and we'll set a box shadow of 0 minus 2 pixels 16 pixels and we'll set this same color over here and we'll just convert it to RGBA and we'll reduce the opacity All right so that's it with our design now what we'll be doing in our JavaScript is that we'll be adding a class called active to this cookie container division so when we add the class called active we'll be setting the bottom to zero so initially we will set the bottom value to minus 100 percent and uh, here we will type dot cookie container dot active and we'll set the bottom to zero All right so that's it with the style.css file now let's go to our javascript file and uh, write the functionality first of all we need to reference some things from html so we need to reference the cookie container division and also the cookie button so let's create constant cookie container document dot query selector and we'll also create a constant for the cookie button now we will add an event listener to the cookie button for the click event and we'll create an arrow function over here and here we will remove the active class from the cookie container division so here we'll type cookie container dot class list dot remove active now we want to display the cookie consent two seconds after the page loads so we have to use set timeout in JavaScript so we'll type set timeout and in that we'll create an arrow function and we'll just add the class of active to cookie container now we have to pass the time over here in the second argument so we'll type comma and the time is calculated in milliseconds so for two seconds we have to type 2000 all right so here we can see after two seconds we get this cookie consent banner now the last thing to do is once the user clicks on the OK button we don't want to display the cookie consent banner anymore so now if we click on OK and if we refresh our page we can see that the cookie consent banner appears again so for that we'll be using local storage so after we remove the active class from cookie container we will add some data to local storage so for that you have to type local storage dot set item and then here you have to pass two arguments the first one is the key and the second is the value so for the key we will type cookie banner displayed and we'll set it to true so now let's go ahead and check whether this value is added to the local storage to check that you have to go to inspect and uh, then go to application and this is our website now let's refresh our page 
Now let's click on this button and see whether we get the value stored over here. And here we can see cookie banner displayed true is added to our local storage. Now if we refresh our page, the banner appears again. So for that we have to check whether the local storage has this item already stored. So if we have the item already stored, then uh, we don't have to display this banner. So here we will add an if condition and uh, we will type local storage dot get item and we will type in the key. So the key is cookie banner displayed. So we'll just copy this from here and uh, we'll just negate this whole condition. So now this says if cookie banner displayed is not in the local storage, then we have to execute this code. That is we have to add the active class. Alright, so that's it with our JavaScript. Now let's save our file and refresh our page. And we can see that the cookie consent banner is not displayed. So let's go to inspect application. And here we have the cookie banner displayed key. Let's delete this and refresh our page. We can see our banner is displayed. Now when we click on OK, we have this value stored over here. Now if you refresh our page, we can see that the banner is displayed no more. Alright, so that's basically it for this video. If you have any doubts, you can ask in the comments below and uh, click on the like button if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to this channel to get the latest video updates. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a nice day.